let's begin. When we started DLC right from the beginning, we knew we wanted to do something with the horse because it's a machine that we've seen throughout both games. And this seemed like the perfect moment to bring it to life. The Horus was an interesting design right from the get-go. It served two purposes. One is to show the end of the world as it happened. We also wanted something that would look impressive and amazing in the landscapes. We settled on this ginormous insectoid machine that's at the same time also a mobile factory. The goal of the first section was to establish the Horus as a force of nature. But we also wanted to give ourselves some potential to escalate, to build up slowly. So starting with a stealth section felt really good to us. It also gave the characters the option to formulate a plan to collaborate with Seika along the way. All right, temperature critical. It's working! To make the beach encounter feel a lot more spectacular and dramatic, we kind of had to do completely the opposite from what we always did. And Horizon is very much about celebrating beautiful nature, you know, and everything is lush. But here, because it, we're dealing with this final moment, we decided to do a 180 and go for just, you know, gray and dark. A very, very different mood from what we usually did. We wanted to structure the fight, and to do that we separated the player and the Horus to give the player the opportunity to observe the Horus like in, in its entirety. It really gives you like an impression of its power. And of course, the beach gave us a reasonably flat space for that big guy to stomp around and splash around in the water. When we had to figure out the movement theme for the Horus Titan, it's basically a zombie. You'll see this in the beach transition as it crawls its way down the beach. It's clawing with its tentacles, pulling itself along, lumbering forward like a shambling zombie would. This was a very, very different content from what we used to build. We needed a new approach. We had to create a, a strike team of specialists from all departments, tech, art, animation, to come together and create this experience in the production environment of uh, DLC. It allowed us to put all the focus on a single encounter and make it as, as awesome and as, as epic as, as we could make it. Horus was the most complex machine we ever made. It contained 1,300 joints. This required updates for engine to handle that complex skeleton. One of the challenges was making climbing on the moving machine. We already had the support for climbing on moving objects, but we had to improve quite a lot to make it look better for a horse. The Horus is massive. It takes up so much of your screen. Quite a lot of Seika's actions that are tied to what the Horus is doing often go unnoticed. Seika is actually up there flying around like this sort of aerial ballet. He's dodging tentacles, taking missile fire, and the player is not really looking because they have to contend with the, the Horus itself. One of the biggest animations we actually had was when Seika causes the Titan to trip. She actually flies under the Titan, causing the tentacles to crash into his legs, it becomes entangled. It's incredibly hard to animate, and most players miss it. But Seika actually will help Aloy in every section of the fight, even if you don't see it. The fight builds up towards something as the horror starts to become more and more overheated, as the fight becomes more and more intense and we get closer and closer to it. It builds up a sort of crescendo that really goes all in, in terms of animation, visual effects, all the abilities of the player will be challenged. We are really trying to push Horizon and our engine to the limits of what it can give you. When I first saw the PC version, I saw it on one of our ultra-wide screens and I was blown away. When you see it on ultra-wide, it's very difficult to go back again. It's very spectacular. 